What's happening, guys? I'm Mike Trudell. He's Kyle Kuzma, and we're very thankful Kuz has decided to spend a few minutes with us. We are here, of course, for Toyota Voices. Yes, sir. Kuz, are you aware that the Lakers and Toyota have been suiting up together for 42 years? Uh, I didn't know about the 42 years thing, right. but I knew they have been suiting up for a while, for sure. 42 years, man. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody on the team 42 years? Oh. Um, Braun might be. Tyson. Could be. Nah, yeah. Ty know? I think Ty so Tyson would be the oldest, like, yeah. now at age 36. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Still, he's 18 seems like years. A, yeah, seems like a young man, though. He's young, though. Yeah. yeah he's got a young body. Take care of his body, though, so. All right. Well, Kuz, you were so good at this last year, we had to bring you back and, and run it back. Nice. We have a bunch of questions from various Laker fans and mm -hmm. people following the team. And we'll start with one from Gia Aragon. How are you feeling about this season so far? Also, is there going to be more Kuzmania merch dropping soon? <laughs> um, well, I'm feeling great about the season. I feel like, um, you know, we're gelling right now. It's uh, beginning stages of, you know, trying to figure out each other's games and where people like to be on the floor and, um, you know, all those little chemistry things that really, you know, make a season special. So, you know, for us, that's what it's all about right now. And um, I'm having a blast learning about everybody. and. Uh, for the merch, it's coming soon. So, um, yeah, I'll let you guys know about that. Okay. One. Any hints at what we might be looking for? Um, yeah, we're coming. We got some sweats, you oh, know. Okay. So we didn't have sweats last time. So that's good. Uh, you know, that's what the people want. So that's what we're gonna give them. If you're around the house, are you most often in some type of sweats, t-shirt, shorts, comfy? Or are you? I'm. Uh, enough? I'm like sweats and hoodie. I'm yeah. like super comfy. At all times in the house, so and just generally in life, right? Yeah. I mean, kinda. you come in, you you class it up. Fur coat. Come. It's not comfy. That's true. You know. Yeah. Is that but, the one that you wore in Chicago last year? I got another one this year. It's way better. <laughs> yeah. Way better. Are you saving that for the first trip to cold weather? Yeah, way better. Not first trip, but I might have to pull it out in New York. Oh, I see. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you have to fit this. Okay, yeah, you have to fit the know, city you're going. You know what I'm saying, come on, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I was gonna ask this later, but that let's just go ahead and do it now. Uh, so. If you had to pick between you got Ingram, Lonzo, and Hart, and you had to pick a drip king out of those three, who would it be? A B.I. I'm giving it a B.I. Yeah? Yeah. He's more of a hype beast, but, uh, you know, he's, he's wearing all the labels. You know, Louis Vuitton, you know, JaVinci. You know what he's wearing because it mm -hmm. sits on his shirt. Yeah, but, that's true. Um, nah, he puts it all together well. You know, he can really dress. I like, I like B.I.'s drip for sure. For people that don't, uh, that aren't currently updated, and, and I wouldn't even consider myself fully updated on this, but drip is essentially just a <laughs> different way of saying swag. So, yeah, it's swag. Just Basically? Drip. Yeah. But there's a difference. Like, you can't just be drip just because you're swag. Like, please. You know, it's a different Please like, tell us. Like, some people are fresh, yeah. and some people have a drip. Okay. So, fresh is just like, you know, base of jeans, you know, a nice little shirt. A little bag, whatever. But drip is like you wearing something different that people oh. don't really use. You wear, you know, it's something that is out there. Could to you me, that's what drip is. I'm I'm considering you an authority on yeah. this figure on, on this matter. That's gotcha. why I asked you. Can so you give you us? Know. Could you give us a couple examples, maybe, from guys on the team that some who like who's fresh, who has actual drip, and and define with more specific examples? I could we could do this for the next half hour if you want. Uh, like 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 Zoe. And uh, Jay Hart, fresh. Um, you know, Bron has some drip. You know, he doesn't wear jeans. He wears like you know, he put the trousers on with some nice socks. Yeah. You know, suede little jacket. You know, stuff like that. Uh, Bi has some drip. Um, you know, of course me. I didn't want to <laughs> put myself in there. But, uh, of course. Um, you know, Beasley's got a little bit of drip because this is totally different. Um, but you no. Know, go with those guys is it generally more expensive to have drip no not necessarily no, not at all okay not at all you can no good I feel like okay. yeah no you can you, you can wear top man or h&m and like be swaggy you know all right thank you for the breakdown because yeah, this, this is important stuff hey, i got you all right larissa would like to know what's your favorite city to visit and arena to play in uh miami Easily. Well, I wouldn't say easily. Um, I love Miami, but I also love Toronto. Those are my two favorite cities to go to just because, one, Toronto's so diverse and um, great food choices. And, you know, Miami is Miami. Um, 
I would say my favorite arena would have to be the uh, Boston Garden mm -hmm. there or Madison Square Garden. Um, you know, being a Laker playing in Boston is always special and it's always fun because the crowd is they hate you. So um, that's why I like there and Madison Square Garden is also just that's the mecca. So. So those are good answers. Also, the classics, though. Is there a is there a underrated city or maybe one place you'd like to go that people would be surprised to hear or just that isn't as common? Um, an underrated arena would have to be OKC. You know, their fans are crazy. They're they're animated every game. They're they're pretty much sold out. And um, an underrated city would have to go Minneapolis. Got it. No, okay, oh, no, 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 it's too cold. No. Either Dallas or Dallas or Portland. I love those cities. Yeah. And the Lakers have already been to Portland twice. Twice, so, so we don't go back yeah, anymore. Yeah. But like it's good, though, because the weather was cool. And it's a tough place to win, but mm -hmm. you got the win. Tough place to play win, too. All right. Adam Rakim Kalkuzma would like to know, what's the best present a teammate has gotten you? Um, if applicable, do you guys get each other gifts? Yeah, we had a Christmas gift last year. Julius, you know, last year he got me a little Gucci bag. I was hype. That's nice. I wore it everywhere. It was wow. nice. I didn't know that was from uh, him. Yeah, it was from him. Generous guy. Um, Bron, Bron got me, I or got got us iPhones the other day. So you know, that's a little toss up right there. I don't know who I'm gonna go with, but I did use the Gucci more. But it's a phone, so I might use that more now too. So right. Would you uh, would you expect maybe a couple more things as the season goes on from LeBron? I hope so. It's, uh, I hope I've so. heard that he you know? can you know dish it out a little yeah, bit. I'm like helping that. him with his assists, so just give me some gifts, man. That's all, that's all I ask for. Okay. Yeah. Dina Bell, here's the question, Kyle. Were you surprised when the team was told that LeBron James would be joining the team, and what was your first reaction to it? And if I can add on to the question, just because this came up in the locker room last night, or mm -hmm. I guess not last night, Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. And so essentially somebody asked LeBron, hey, I, I heard something about when you first signed. And, and he said, yeah, Kuz was the first person that FaceTimed me. Mm -hmm. And he said, I was on a plane. And I said, oh, that must have been a nice plane because, you know, we, it's a little harder to FaceTime <laughs> on most right. players. And he kind of gave the, well, yeah, you know how the type of planes that I fly on. <laughs> uh, but can you take us through that, exp when you, how you got the news, uh, obviously your phone, but uh, what you saw, and then the next things, the next steps that happened? Um, that was a long question. Yeah, that was a lot. Sorry about that. I don't even remember what you said, honestly. No, I was just playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I was, you know, I was really, really excited. Um, you know, I kind of figured that he would, would come here just because it made the most sense for him. and you know, everything that he has going on. And, you know, right away I, I called him as soon, as soon as I heard the news. And, um, and I didn't think he was going to answer because, you know, everybody was going to hit him probably. Mm. But, um, yeah, no, I just called him and super excited. Uh, quick FaceTime because he's on the plane, you know. Um, and the rest is kind of what it is, so. He recalled you being quite excited. Yeah, I was excited. Yeah, the, yeah. I wasn't screaming, but I was excited. Uh. <laughs> do you remember your, you don't remember your exact words, but just like, was it like, yeah, let's do this. I think I should be like, yeah, like four times. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did he actually, so. Or, so I'm trying to remember who, I wish I could give credit. I can't remember who asked him the question, but you actually hit him up last year. Yeah. And what, so what was that? Where'd you get his number? Uh, who, you know, how did the, what did you ask? What did he say? Um, you know, the biggest thing I just wanted to text him about, um, not about coming here um, whatsoever, is pretty much learn about how he takes care of his body and, um, mm. you know, being in the league for 16 years, 15 at that time, um, playing at the level that he does every single night, you know, and the amount that he takes care of his body, you know, I wanted to know what he does to do that because, you know, for me as a young player, I want to have that longevity as well, so. And that also that probably shouldn't surprise people that know you because you're not shy about asking people for yeah. uh, you, you want to get better, right? You want to mm -hmm. you, you've done it with Kobe, you've done it with a lot of other players, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's part of the coups thing. Yes, sir. Jazz Machiavelli would like to know how is it adapting to the Hollywood lifestyle? Um, now it's a presumptuous question. If you have adapted to the Hollywood lifestyle, well, I mean I live in Marina Del Rey, so 
I'm kind of 40 minutes away from Hollywood. Um, Sometimes with people that, that don't live in LA, right? In fact, so I'm from Minnesota, and they would when I came to LA, they said they started calling me Hollywood. Yeah. And I got in, and it's like you realize there are 17 million people that right. live in this. Right. It's a massive. Not everybody's area. Hollywood here. Yeah. It's a very, um, it's a very big place. I like going to Hollywood. You know, I like the food. That's where all the food spots are. Um, but I mean, I, I'm just well. Um, you know, I, I have people that are around me that you know keep me humble, keep me grounded. So, um, you know. It has its perks for sure, you know, a lot, like I said, a lot of food places, a lot of things to do, um, but I love it out here. You know, this is a place that, um, you know, I've grown a lot in the past year and some change, so, um, you know, I'm looking forward for, you know, many, many other experiences as well, too, so. Sounds like you've had some good meals over the last couple of years. Tons. Is there any, is there a kind of food that you maybe hadn't had growing up that now you're into all the time or what what, what kind of places um, you look for? I think last year I ate steak on just about every road trip. Just every single road trip, like every day pretty much. Just because like growing up I never ate steaks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having a little bit more money can, you know, help you do that. Sure. So, um, you know, I gained a little bit of weight last season because of that. <laughs> So have you adjusted that for this season? Uh, yeah, you know, I still eat my steaks, but um, I have a chef now, so, um, you know, he doesn't cook as much steak for me. It's more like chicken and uh, fish, lean stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I get my cheat meals when I'm not with him, so. Well, not only that though, but you are literally amongst the best athletes in the world. You are one of them. You're working out every day. Mm -hmm. You're running miles and you're lifting, you know, so. If you want to have a little grass-fed beef, don't you know? Yeah, don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Right? Organic beef, though, got to be a little bit organic. Grass-fed. Yeah. Of course. Same thing. Tomato, tomato. Of course. <laughs> Luis, Kyle would like to know what are your favorite artists for music that you listen to pregame? Oh, favorite artist: uh, Drake, Future, Nipsey Hussle, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole. Um, <sighs> see, that's, that's usually what I'm usually listening to, pretty much. Okay. So. Did you watch Drake on the Bron show on the, on the shop? I yeah, I did watch it. Mm -hmm. Were you sitting there? Because at that point, I hadn't heard anything about the whole Kanye thing. And I yeah. was just sitting there with, with the, the popcorn meme. Just it was, yeah, it was nice, huh? It was interesting. It was very interesting. Yeah, and because I didn't realize that basically after all that had happened, several of the best tracks from Scorpion, you know, he kind of came out of that. Yeah. It's crazy. That makes huh? sense. That when you listen to it again, though, then in, you, you know you can. After watching that, I, I would suggest people check it out in the shop. I wouldn't. Pretty good. I wouldn't mess with Drake if I was Kanye. That's all I'm saying. I wouldn't say nothing about him no more. Seems like he got a little bit of dirt on him. So. Okay, you yeah. heard it here. You heard it here. Hey, if you're watching, easy. Hey, Florencio, Armirol. Kyle, here's a, actually a couple of questions here. First, how could the Lakers limit opponents' offensive rebounds? Tyson Chandler seems to have helped that some uh, and improved the Lakers team defense. And yes, if you could elaborate on what type of practice drills and mindsets go into that. Um, I mean, the biggest thing about rebounding and uh, limiting offensive rebounding is not only just going up and getting the ball, but boxing out um, you know, basic fundamentals of you know getting into guys' knees, um, especially because we switch a lot and that, that allows guards to get on you know, bigger guys like Cat and Taj Gibson and, um, you know, boxing out and taking out their legs so they can't jump over us is, you know, one obstacle that, you know, we can do to, you know, sidetrack them from offensive rebounding. And the mindset part is just, you know, being selfish on the rebounding end. You know, rebounding is one area on the basketball floor where you can be, self, uh, you can be selfish because, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, getting the rebound is also my goal, so. Let's go and let's break into your game a little bit, and then we'll, we'll get back to some of these questions for this season. So, uh, scoring's up, minutes are about the same. Your field goal percentage has gone from 45% to 49.4%, even though three ball hasn't been fallen, yep. um, as we were talking about earlier before we, we went on. Now, that's something I, I think you expect will start to fall. Yeah. Right? The, the, the stroke seems to look good. Mm -hmm. But how is your, what did you work on in the offseason? How have you seen that start to play into these first couple of weeks of the regular season, Goose? Um, you know, working on my body has really allowed me to, you know, be confident going to the rim, uh, attacking it full force. And, um, you know, my explosion 
um, from an athletic standpoint, has you know built up and gained so where you know I'm I'm very confident going to the rim now. So you can feel that I can difference? definitely feel it. So um, you know that kind of explains why um, my two point percentage is a little bit higher than a three point. So yeah, I mean I'm I'm looking right now. If you go to NBA.com uh, backslash stats, all of your num you know at if you just look last year compared to this year, all of your at rim you know in paint numbers of those have all gone up. Mm -hmm. and, and so you think the the biggest part of that is just your body stronger and athletic or yeah, body being confident. Uh, working on my finishing this summer, um, you know, I worked on my three ball too, but you know, it's going to fall. You know? Yeah, small sample size. Yeah, obviously. small sample so size, but um, you know, got some to fall last game, so that you know, that's uh, definitely a positive step for me. So, does it also have to do a little bit with the teammates? Uh, LeBron, obviously, a gifted passer. Rondo, a gifted passer. Lonzo, a gifted passer. Does that is that if you've created some angles for yourself because of those passers to be able to get to the rim too? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, part of that field goal percentage is because of, you know, my cutting ability and having those guys find me, getting out in transition and running and attacking the rim. Um, you know, playing with those guys, they're always looking to pass. So, um, you know, for me, it's, um, you know, great because, you know, I'm a scorer and have a scorer mentality. So, um, you know, it goes hand in hand. Okay. So steals uh, about the same, blocks are slightly up, assists about the same, uh, rebounding slightly down. We, we just talked about the rebounding, but for you individually, given where you are on the court, uh, what do, you, do you think that you can rebound more? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, that's one area that, you know, I'm always trying to do more of, uh, you know, also looking at the personnel from we had last year to this year is a much different from a rebounding standpoint, right. you know, adding LeBron and, JaVale's out there, Tyson's out there, you know, those are, you know, big time rebounding guys. So, um, you know, I think this year, more so than ever, uh, than last year, we've done a great job as a team, um, as gang rebounding. So, you know, that's why you kind of see everybody that three to four to five to six range of rebounds, so. Do you think that, you know, Josh Hart and Lonzo are stealing your rebounds intentionally to take away from your swag? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah but, um, That's what I thought. You know, for instance, last game, um, you know, I wasn't too much focused on rebounding, uh, more so boxing out the big guys, so they couldn't get it, and you know that allowed guards to come in and fly in and take them. So, um, you know, it's a team effort. You know, rebounding is just, you know more than just getting it. You know, boxing out. You know, right. you know just like Brook Lopez last year. You know, he was great, probably one of the best players in the league at boxing somebody out, but. It, his rebound numbers didn't really reflect that. So, I think that's valuable that you point that out about Brook because he does he does take heat just for having just the sheer low number for a center, but he really does like that allows other players to get a lot yeah. of rebounds the way mm -hmm. that he kind of takes up his space, keeps his guy off. Mm -hmm. So shout out to Brook. Okay, Swaggy G, Kyle would like to know what's your favorite pregame snack or meal? Um, every every game I always eat a pasta. Um, you know, whether that's, you know, at, at team meal or at the arena, I try to always get a pasta in just for that extra energy. So what do you like on your pasta? Um, you know, it could be red sauce. Just, just now for whatever reason, you know, trying pesto. So, okay. That's great too. You throw some uh, little broccoli in there, maybe some, uh, nah, just straight pasta. Oh, no meatballs. No, no, no? Nah, man. Pasta. Right, oh, keeping it simple. Yeah, man. All right. Rumi asks, who was your favorite player and or icon growing up? Uh, my favorite player would probably be Kobe. Um, you know, that's why I wear all his shoes. <laughs> but, um, you know, just his mentality, the way he approached the game, the way he played the game, and, um, you know, how he scored it, you know, really, you know, amazed me as a kid. So, What's your – you know, sometimes, guys, you, you don't have to tell us exactly what all yeah. the conversations are like, but what's it been like getting to know Kobe a little bit and working with him? Oh, it's great. Um, you know, he, he's a role model to me, you know, somebody that I can always talk to, uh, text, and ask for advice. So, um, you know, what better not to have, you know, as a young player, somebody like him to have as a, have a, as a resource. So, I, just showed, I, think, I think that's my favorite. That Kobe. one, I like the yeah the the eleven low Black, Black History, History Month, yeah yeah yeah, and then, dope. I like that, that yeah. Do you have a favorite Kobe shoe? Um, man, man, there's so many I don't even know. 
Um, I like the newest AD shoe though. Yeah. The newest one. I love that shoe. What uh, colorway? Um, my own colorway that I have. I the like Coos, that one. The Coos colorway? Yeah, I like that one. Just because it's mine, so. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. I'm go with that one. All right, good. All right. Who is, uh, just a, a few more coups here. We appreciate your time as always. Yeah. Again, you're joining us on Toyota Voices. Uh, the Lakers and Toyota go back 42 years together. That is a good and productive and long relationship. All right. What has been the toughest obstacle you've faced thus far in your career from AO? Um, man. Um, I don't think I've had that many obstacles as an NBA player yet. But um, How about any, any life obstacle? Any, any, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, outside of Flint, you know, I'd probably say uh, my freshman year in college at Utah, um, coming in, had a little bit of buzz and um, I kind of let that get to me and I thought that, you know, by that I'm just going to play right away and uh, have stuff handed to me and uh, my first year I wasn't, you know, we were on a Sweet 16 team and, um, you know, I played about five minutes a game and it felt like the only time I was getting in was if we were down down by 15 with two minutes to go or we were up by 30. So, um, right. you know, that was very hard for me because I knew where I wanted to get in life, um, you know, pretty much the NBA and, you know, I know by playing five minutes and you see all these other freshmen one and duns and freshmen that are, you know, making a big impact and that wasn't me so you know I had a ultimatum really after that year to either transfer or you know just get in the gym and get better and you know I'll beat some guys at my position and um, you know that was a hard period for me but um, you know got through it and I'm here now. Gotcha. Hey you mentioned Flint have you have you been keeping track of even the current situation with the water I know it's not Yep. hasn't been fully taken care of uh, by any means yet. How, what's your what's your way of staying connected to that community and still thinking about all the issues that are going on there? Uh, I feel like I'm always connected. Uh, you know, all my family still lives there. Uh, all my family. So um, I'm always talking to them and hearing things and I have friends that still live there and, um, you know, me going back and I do my camp every year and um, you know, I plan on doing a lot more things. So, um, to be connected to that city and community is, you know, something I always want. For sure. Uh, JaVale, h how close to where you grew up did he and kind of his family grow up? Do you guys, you guys talked about that? Um, I want to say like 10 minutes away from me. Okay. Opposite side of town though, so. Okay. Is it, is it uh, something you can relate about? Do you, uh, can you, you know, do you guys ever chat about that? Oh yeah, we chat about yeah. it from time to time. Yeah. Um, you know, right high schools or anything like that. No, okay. no, no, no. He uh, he moved when he was in like eighth grade, so okay, yeah, gotcha. he wasn't in the high school scene. But yeah, we talk about it. You know, being from Flint and having somebody you know grow up from there and be older than me is pretty cool to you know be around for sure. Okay, a few more here. As I mentioned, Yusuf asks, "What inspires your fashion and who are the best dressed players in the league?" Now we already talked about the, this the difference between drip and swag yeah. and all that and, and fresh and everything. But uh, how about just where you get some of the inspiration from or how you like to dress? Um, you know, I think that I kind of just get it from, you know, what I feel. You know, some days I may, you know, feel like I want to be cozy and I kind of just, you know, put on what I feel is good. Some days I want to dress up and, you know, look good and, you know, just dress how I want. I feel like fashion is a statement of you and, you know, you may get some inspirations from some people, but, you know, majority is, you know, just me, you know, feeling what I want to wear. And to some of the top guys, I'm going to go, Brian is up there, uh, Westbrook, um, me, of course. I like Nick Young. Kelly Oubre is cool sometimes. Um, who else? That's Dwayne good. Wade. He's okay. pretty good. You yeah. know? No, I mean, you know, that's it's a lot of people. Good. Yeah, that's it's a good a list. a lot of people. Okay. NB, oh, ND Vahina would like to know, what are your three favorite pizza toppings? Wow. Pepperoni, sausage, and ham. Okay. Now, will you, if you're going to order a pizza, will you get 
with those three, or do you just strictly? No. Nah, okay. No, no. It's too much meat for me. So uh, you classic pepperoni? Yeah, just plain pepperoni. That's my that's my go to. Do you want to know what mine is? Uh, pineapple. No, so I'm, no pepperoni. But <laughs> I like to go triple pepperoni. Uh huh. Green olives, extra marinara sauce. Sheesh. And ideally cooked well done, if possible. Yeah, the like. burnt piece is good though. That's why I like to go. No, yeah. I like that. No. Yeah, appreciate you. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. So if you want to try, if you want to mix in some green olives, it's a nice. Uh, it's a I nice used to like green olives. I used to. See, it's a nice compliment to the pepperoni. But I think that's because my grandma just kind of forced it because that's what she liked. Oh, she liked green olives. Yeah. Shout out to your grandma. I don't like that. It's grandma though. What? Why? why are you, Still don't like why it. Would you <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. From uh, Lars Ridley, what is your career goal? My career goal is to win multiple championships and, you know, just be one of the, you know, best players. I think that's why, you know, we play basketball. You know, you don't want to just play just to be average. So, mm-hmm. you know, just to be, you know, as great as I can be. Gotcha. Two more. Uh, Benaya Perez. Apologies if I messed that name up. Who has helped you the most while, you have, uh, while you've been in the league? Man, there's a lot of people. Um... You don't have to pick one. I mean, you can. I know you know. it's been a lot. Yeah. Um, Bron Bron has helped me out a lot, um, even in the short time that he's been here. Rondo has helped me out extremely a lot. Tyson Chandler as well. Uh, he just came here, but um, and I went to prep school with his brother, so I've known him for a while. Hmm. Um, Corey Brewer, Andrew Bogut, you know, all, all the vets that we've had, you know, they've 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 helped me out a lot, you know. Ever since I've been here, I've asked questions, and I'm fortunate enough to have vets that you know really care about you know helping young guys. So, how about from the coaching side? Anybody you spent more time with individually? Yeah, Miles Simon. He's helped me on the court, player development wise. Um, you know, Brian Shaw, B. Shaw. That's my guy too. You know, he has so many stories and so much knowledge about the game. You know, he played with Larry Bird and played with. Kobe and Shaq, so, um, you know, that's a lot of years in the league. Luke has is, is sometimes shared that you'll, you know, let's say there's a, you have a defensive breakdown or something, he's, you'll text him that night or mm-hmm. call that night. Is, uh, is that just your, what's the motivation there, just to, to make sure that they're aware that you are thinking about it and want to get better and, and also maybe even ask for some advice? Or what, what's going through your mind in that situation? Um, I mean, I, I don't really care if they think that I'm, you know, making it aware that, gotcha. of that. It's more so just me trying to learn. Got it. Um, you know, I've al- I always ask questions. So, you know, for me, I, I just want to be a good player. And, you know, that may happen on defensive breakdowns. It might be offensive clips. You know, s- wherever I can get better, I'm always going to ask. And, you know, he's the head coach. So, um, you know, he knows more than, you know, most of us. So, Got it. All right. Yeah. Final question from Ben uh, Saida. What are you trying to improve on the most this season? And you could take that if you want, individually or a team. Um, well, individually, I want to just keep getting better defensively. Um, you know, that, that's always my main focus right now. And trying to get better there is going to enhance my game and just make me a, you know, a fuller basketball player. And from a team standpoint, just, you know, keep getting better, you know, keep, you know, learning each other. Uh, getting that chemistry and it's coming you know it's been 10 games and I feel like you know we've been you know steadily you know getting better and better with each other so um, I think those are my two goals. Kuz thank you for killing it once again man. Appreciate you. Coming on Voices the Lakers and Toyota 42 years together thank you guys for watching and sending in those questions for Kuz. Appreciate right, you uh, guys. Time for you to go get some rest man. All right? Yes All right. for sure. See you guys next time.